Hello to our friends joining us via recording. We are doing the second half of the histology lab, um, at least what we're supposed to cover during week four, and that is uh, connective tissue and epithelial tissue. So we're going to remind ourselves of some of the stuff that we covered in the other histology video that was recorded earlier today, and then we'll cover some new stuff. For my friends who were here earlier this morning, can you help me out in the chat? Do we remember which kind of tissue um, these two images show us? What kind of specific kind of tissue do we see in this picture? Does anyone remember? These two pictures, excuse me, two different ones, same tissue. Yeah, so Ariel's chiming in. The first type of tissue that we see here on our screen is what we call simple squamous epithelium. Here, I'm gonna do a terrible job writing. Since I'm not in Blackboard, I can't type. Here we go. This is called simple, gonna abbreviate, simple squamous epithelium, or squamous, you might hear it called squamous, same thing. Simple squamous epithelium. One of the things that we talked about a lot this morning uh, in relation to epithelial tissue is what the parts of the tissue's name tell us. When I see the beginning part here, this word simple, I guess I'll write it all, right? When I see this word simple, what does it mean about an epithelial tissue if it's simple? So simple squamous, simple cuboidal. What does that word simple mean? Yeah, so simple means that I have one layer of cells, one layer. When I look at this type of tissue here, notice how, let me find my little pointer here, notice how I have one line of cells right here, and I've got a line of cells right here, a line of cells, it's all squiggly, right, over there. Here's a line of cells next to each other, one down here. When we talk about simple epithelium, you're gonna see skinny lines of cells. There's one layer of cells, they're all next to each other. That's what simple means. When I start talking about there being more than one layer of cells, you'll see the word that we're gonna talk about in a moment called stratified. Stratified. Stratified means that there's more than one layer. Stratified. So we're looking at a type of epithelium called simple epithelium, meaning I've got one layer of cells. The second part of the name of this type of epithelial tissue, it's simple squamous or simple squamous. I like to call it squamous. Um, when we talk about this, this type of cell, this is the shape of the cells. So when you think of squamous cells, I want you to think of flat cells. Uh, or very skinny, or I mean, technically, uh, what this word squamous means is actually scales, kind of like scales. So think about scales like on a fish. Um, that's the these flat, scaly cells. They, they look maybe kind of circular, uh, like a squished circle. So the first type of epithelium we're looking at in our picture here is simple squamous epithelium. We talked about this morning how simple squamous epithelium is found in the lungs. So what you're actually looking at when you look at simple squamous epithelium is a type of slide that's gonna have these big white spots on it. These big white spots are actually open spaces in this type of tissue. So in your lungs, we have these things called alveoli or air sacs. And you're looking at a cross section. If we chopped those air sacs open, this is what they would look like. We'd have a ring of cells on the outside and we'd have an open space in the middle where you'd actually have oxygen. So simple squamous epithelium, your, your tricks to identifying it, we're looking for these big open spaces, these big open spaces where there would be air. When we're talking about the location of this kind of tissue, the, the location is technically called the alveoli, the alveoli, or in, in easy person words, air sacs air sacs of, of the lungs. Sorry, that writing is just terrible. <laughs> uh, let me mention for my friends who weren't here this morning, um, there is a document called the Tissue Location and Function Guide. You can find it in Visible Body or you can find it in the student Google Drive wherever you're downloading your worksheets for each week. There's a thing called the Tissue Location and Function Guide. 
you'll notice when you're looking at that, it lists for you all the, the locations and the functions of each type of tissue that you need to know. Please only learn the functions and locations that are in bold, the really dark ones. We've only got so much space in our mind in this amount of time that we have to learn these things. We don't need to learn extra information right now. So when you're looking at that tissue location and function guide, you'll see that the location that you're supposed to know is the alveoli, which is the air sacs of the lungs. You'll see that the function that's in bold, what you're supposed to know is that this type of tissue does diffusion. Diffusion which ties in really nicely to lecture stuff, right? Diffusion is where stuff goes from high concentration to low concentration. So when we talk about these cells, I've got a whole bunch of oxygen out here, not as much oxygen inside these cells or inside the blood vessels that are around these cells. Oxygen diffuses from where you breathe it in into the cells throughout the body. So simple squamous epithelium, uh, one layer of cells, they're really flat and scaly, and you recognize it with these big open spaces. Our first type of, of epithelium, simple squamous. Next type of epithelium, let me get my pen again. This is another kind of simple epithelium. So we're still talking one layer here, simple epithelium. But the, the shape of the epithelium we're talking about this time is called cuboidal cuboidal. Hey, I bet that we can guess, even if we weren't there this morning. If I'm talking about a cuboidal cell, what kind of shape is that going to have? A cuboidal cell. Yeah, cuboidal cells, they're, they're kind of cube shape. Um, the way I'm going to type this, because I just don't want to write this much. Um, sometimes the way you define a cuboidal cell is it's just as tall as it is wide. So just as tall as it is wide. Let me let me show you what I mean by that. A cell that's just as tall, click, as it is wide, is a cuboidal shape shell, shaped cell. Ugh. The other way that you'll recognize cuboidal cells is their their nucleus is really big compared to the size of the cell. So let me show you some of our cuboidal cells here. See this open space right here, and then I've got a line of cells that are around it. These dark spots that I see right here are the nuclei of those cells, and the, the cube-shaped cell is, is everything that's around it. So I've got this light purple line on the outside of this little circle here. That's something that we call the basement membrane. Um, that divides up these cells from all of their neighbors, because I've got neighbors all over the place here. So I've got one row of cells, and let me, here, let's frame them in. I'm going to use a color that I hope shows up. My basement membrane is, is here on the outside of my blue circle here, or on the inside, excuse me, my blue circle. I've got one set of cube-shaped cells. Or if I go up here, I'm going to circle, again, one set of cube-shaped cells. Up here, another one set of cube-shaped cells. So when we talk about simple cuboidal epithelium, the way you're going to recognize it is you're going to see these white spots. They're much smaller than the white spots we saw with, with our simple squamous epithelium. These little white spots right here are, are tubes that you find inside your kidney. So um, the big location for us to know of simple cuboidal epithelium is the tubules of the kidney, which is just a fancy word for the small tube in the kidney. Each of these circles right here would actually be filled with urine uh, or stuff that were precursors to urine that were in the process of filtering. So the, this type of cell here, when we talk about cuboidal cells, they're really good at doing, it's called secretion and absorption. Secretion means I'm spitting something out. Absorption means I'm absorbing something. The process of making your urine is all about secreting things and then reabsorbing the things that we don't want to go away. So each of these little tubes that are open here in the middle are surrounded by cuboidal cells that have this big dark nucleus in them in a cell that's about as wide as it is tall, simple cuboidal epithelium. I'll color on my other picture here just to show you. Same idea. I've got a circle of cells right here. I've got a circle of cells right here. 
So your tip off that you're looking at simple cuboidal epithelium in our class is we're always looking at slides that came from the kidney. You're always going to see, I keep losing my little writing thing here. Here we go. You always see this open space in the middle where I would have that precursor to urine and you'll see that layer of cells around it. So there's my middle part right there. There's my middle part right there. Middle part inside here. Help me out in the chat. So far we have done simple squamous and simple cuboidal. Send me a thumbs up if you feel okay so far, or tell me if we have any questions right now before we move on. Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up. That's good. Give it just one moment more in case someone's typing. It always takes longer to type, right, than to just, just talk. Okay. Oh, I have a hand. Perfect. Uh, go for it, Monica. So oh, sorry. Um, this is a oh. topic, but before I forget, the um for the group wiki, can I um can we like answer like two of our three questions and then go back and finish it? Yes, absolutely. You don't have to do them all at once. It just all has to be done by by Sunday night. So do as many as, as you want to do right now. Uh, well. Within reason, you can only do up to three. Please don't answer all of them. <laughs> but if you want to go do one today, if you want to do two today, whatever, yeah, just make sure it's done by Sunday. All right, let's go to our next kind of tissue here. Our next kinds of tissue are cells that are taller than they are wide. Let me type that. Taller than they are wide. Uh, for my friends who were able to make it this morning, what's the name of the shape of cells that are taller than they are wide? What's the name of this cell shape here? Yeah, so Ariel typed for us. I'm going to try to write it down here. Columnar. Columnar. These are cells that are taller than they are wide, meaning they're tall and skinny. They're column shaped. So when I'm looking at these cells, let me start with my picture over on the left. This set of cells, notice how I can see this dark spot in the middle of all of these cells. That is the nucleus of each of these cells here. Notice that my nuclei are kind of going all over the place. Um, this particular slide that we're looking at right here comes from inside your intestines. And your intestines have these little fingers where they fold up the membrane. Um, so you're looking actually at the little fingers that reach up. All your food would be up here. So these are little fingers of tissue that reach up next to it. So <clears throat> I've got one line of nuclei. Even though it's going all over the place, there's just one row of these cells here. When I have one row of cells, the word that I use for that is the one we're used to using, simple. So over here on the left, I'm looking at simple columnar epithelium. There's one row. When I look down at, at my other one, though, check out here. Here's my, my basement membrane, the bottom of my epithelial tissue here. Notice when I look at this epithelial tissue, notice that I can see some nuclei right here. And then I see some that are kind of mixed in right here. And I see some more that are mixed in up here. This morning, we talked about how if you see nuclei that are bouncing all over the place, these dark circles that are everywhere, this is the kind of tissue, I'm going to type it first, that I call pseudo-stratified. Pseudo-stratified. The beginning part, pseudo, means fake. Fake. Pseudo-stratified means fake stratified. And we haven't used the word stratified yet, so let's define that here. I'm not going to write the whole thing. This word stratified. When I talk about an epithelial tissue, if I say it's a stratified tissue, that means that it has at least two, probably more, layers. So when I talk about pseudo stratified epithelium, fake stratified epithelium, these are cells that are trying to pretend like they have more than one layer, but really everybody's attached to the bottom. 
everyone's still attached to the basement membrane. So the way you recognize this is see all these nuclei that are all over the place. It just looks like a mess. The fact that these are, are all over the place, I call them my fake it till we make it. We're going to pretend like we have more than one layer. We're not going to have more than one layer, but we're pretending. So this is called pseudo stratified columnar. Going to make myself write it. Bear with me. Pseudo. And you can see this on your lab packet, the way it's spelled pseudo for fake stratified for more than one layer pseudo stratified. The other thing we have to do with our columnar epithelium is we have to talk about what's going on at the top of those cells. When I look at my picture over here on the right, notice that on the top of these cells, you see a bunch of things that look like eyelashes. So like the eyelashes you have on your own eyes, eyelashes. These structures up here at the top that look like wavy eyelashes what do I call those wavy eyelashes on the top of my cells? Yeah, a couple of us are, are chiming in here. Those wavy eyelashes are called cilia. They're called cilia. Whenever you see them, and you will only possibly see them on columnar epithelium, that's the only shape of cells that have cilia, is columnar cells. These cilia look like eyelashes. They stick up. And when you think about cilia, every time you see them, you should be thinking movement. Every time I see cilia, I'm thinking movement. So when I look at these cells here and I see that they have these big long eyelashes on the top, my big long eyelashes up here, those are my cilia. That tells me that this type of tissue is gonna be moving stuff. So uh, when we're talking about our pseudo stratified, columnar epithelium with cilia, we're moving stuff like mucus or stuff like dust. The other kind of cilia, uh, ciliated columnar cells that we see are the simple columnar cells that have cilia. Those help to move things like eggs through the fallopian tube to get them down to the uterus. So anytime you, should, you see cilia, you should be thinking movement. By the way, that is an example, find my pointer here, of anatomy being related to physiology. Anytime you see cilia, that's my anatomy, my physiology is moving stuff. Cilia always move stuff. So the technical name, the full name for my tissue that I see on the right over there, that's called ciliated pseudostratified, I'm typing it for you, columnar epithelium, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. I was telling my friends this morning, if you had taken this class about a year or two ago, you would have had to write all of those words without any help. So we can be grateful that we don't have to write all of those words without any help, right? It's hard enough just to learn them. I'm not going to make you <laughs> come up with all of those out of thin air. So uh, my type of tissue that we're looking at on the left side of the screen, put pointer back, ciliated because I have cilia up here on the top, pseudostratified because my nuclei are going nuts all over the place, columnar epithelium because these cells are tall and skinny. When I look at my tissue over here, Notice that my tissue over here doesn't have all of the big long eyelashes that I see everywhere, like I see on the top of here. Notice how, for example, this space over here, we look kind of fluffy on the top or fuzzy on the top. These little fuzzies that I'm seeing up here are structures that I call microvilli. Microvilli. So microvilli kind of look like peach fuzz. And the job of microvilli, this, this peach fuzz stuff on the top of these cells, it's not to help with movement. Microvilli actually help with absorption. Absorption. So when I say absorption, I'm meaning things like nutrients or water. Microvilli help us to absorb water so we don't get dehydrated. Or they help us to absorb the nutrients in our food so that we have energy. So when I see a cell that has peach fuzz on the top, and again, we're talking about columnar cells here. 
when they have peach fuzz on the top, I would say that those cells have microvilli. Except I don't say in their name that they have microvilli. What I say in their name is just that they don't have cilia. So the type of, of epithelium that you see on the left side of your screen is called non-ciliated simple columnar epithelium. Non-ciliated means I don't have cilia, which in the case of columnar epithelium means instead I have microvilli. So non-ciliated, simple, I have one layer, all those nuclei are in one line, simple columnar epithelium because these are column-shaped cells. You'll notice in your lesson number four lab packet that we gave you a picture of a simple, so ciliated, simple columnar epithelium. We don't have a slide in the lab to look at that. So that is the picture um, or pictures that look very similar to that. Um, that is what you need to make sure you know for ciliated, simple columnar epithelium. Um, that is only found in a few, very few places, and we don't have a slide showing those places. So um, the main types you're going to see on, on images when you're trying to sort them are either the ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium or the non-ciliated simple columnar epithelium. Those are the main ones that we ask you to identify in pictures. Yeah, so Keenan asked the clarifying question. Uh, when they're non-ciliated, they have microvilli. That is correct, yeah. Our options with columnar cells, either they are or are not going to have cilia. If they do not have cilia, then they have microvilli. So though you're always gonna see something on the top of these column-shaped cells. Either it's gonna be those eyelashes or it's gonna be that peach fuzz. Whatever it is that you see on the top, we have a word to describe it because this is anatomy, right? There's words for everything. So. If, I, if I've got those eyelashes, it's ciliated. If I don't have eyelashes, it's non-ciliated. Good question. All right, let's look at our next type of epithelial tissue. Actually, sorry, before I do this, my friends from this morning, we already looked at this, these examples together. Uh, I want you to help me out, my friends that were not here this morning. When I look at my tissue here on the left, Let's start with this right here, the stuff along the top. What is the name of, of these things here along the top? What are these little guys up here? Who can, who can help me out? Can we tell? One friend's voting. She's right. Uh, we are looking at those eyelashes. Again, here on the top, you can see them really clearly on this particular image, all those, those eyelashes, all of those cilia. So this type of tissue that I'm, I'm looking at here is a ciliated tissue because it has those cilia. When I look at the shape of these cells, they're pretty tall and skinny. What was the name of the shape of cells that were tall and skinny? Tall and skinny? Yeah, those ones are my columnar cells. Absolutely, we're columnar cells. And notice when you look here, my nuclei zigzag back and forth. They're going all over the place when I'm looking inside here. When my nuclei zigzag all over the place, these are my fake it till you make it cells. These are my pseudostratified cells. So the tissue on the left, again, here's its full name, ciliated, pseudostratified columnar epithelium. It's one of those types that we looked at before. Another picture of that, that ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Hey, here's something that I did not mention this morning that I want to point out now because I forgot to say it this morning. See this little thing right here and right here and right here. These little circles that you see uh, that are a little bit lighter than the cells, the, the rest of the cells in there, those are things called goblet cells. Goblet cells. Goblet cells are a type of cell that make mucus. And I will only see goblet cells mixed in with columnar epithelium. There's another way to recognize columnar epithelium is seeing these goblet cells. 
Um, a, a gross analogy to help you remember what they do is just think about a goblet full of, of mucus. Really bad imagery, but now you'll never forget. So uh, a cup full of mucus, that's what these goblet cells are. So when we talk about uh, this ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium, we have this in, in your throat, in your respiratory tract. And we use mucus to catch the crud that you breathe in. So dust, debris, bacteria. So these cups full of, of mucus are, are spitting out mucus on top of the cilia. And the cilia are, are moving back and forth, back and forth to help move that mucus to catch anything that you might breathe in. So goblet cells, I can see a few of them mixed in here. You'll see as, as you're sorting through other pictures of our tissue types, you'll see some really clear goblet cells. They're much lighter than the tissue. So you can kind of see them on this picture, but I know there's, there's some better ones as well. Yeah, so Mike asked what a goblet is. That's a fair question. Yeah, and then Nicole's right. It's kind of like a fancy, fancy cup. Yeah, so here I'll, I'll draw you what, what I picture a goblet looking like. Kind of like this. I guess you could kind of say it's like a wine glass, right? Here we go. So instead of our, our wine glass here, if, if this was wine, we'd have some wine in our wine glass, right? Instead of it being wine, we've got mucus in there. That's lovely, right? Lovely analogy. <laughs> yes, I actually, when I was saying goblet, I was thinking of Harry Potter fire. Um, that's a fun one. Uh, and yes, to answer Sarah's question, she asked, these are only found in columnar epithelium. That's correct. We only see goblet cells in columnar epithelium. That is correct. Yep. Okay, so remember, we, we typed it earlier. We've got the cilia up here. We've got the fake it till we make it pattern going on here. We've got the columnar cells, ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium over here on the left. Over here on the right, it's more of those peach fuzz cells. So see how there's not long stringies coming off of the top of here. There's just fuzzies on the top. So these are the ones that have those microvilli instead of cilia. I included this picture because um, full disclosure, I'm a histology nerd. Like, I just think it's so beautiful. So I look at this section of, of the tissue right here. I'm like, oh, that's perfect columnar cells. Like, look at how beautiful they are. And then you look down here. Oh, they're just so beautiful and perfect. So your, your nerd teacher was like, I love these columnar cells. We got to look at them. So this is an example. I'll type it in, in the chat for us of the other type of columnar epithelium that we, we talked about. So the other type of columnar epithelium was the non-ciliated simple columnar epithelium. Some of my slides, to go back to our, our goblet cell reference, some of my, my slides that have this kind of tissue, you would see a white spot in here. And we'd see another white spot in here and another one up here. Those white spots are those goblet cells. So you'll either see them, you can kind of see the, the mucus that's in little, little balls inside here. So you can kind of see it here but I know you've got some pictures that you can see them even clearer. So keep that in mind when you're, you're looking at those tissue images. All right, next types of epithelium. Um, here's where we need to talk about uh, how stratified epithelium works. Remind me in the chat, when I talk about stratified epithelium, what does that word stratified mean again? What does stratified mean? Yeah, stratified means there's more than one. There's at least two, maybe more. Here is an important idea that I mentioned this morning that I want to reiterate with you guys. When you are looking at a type of tissue that is stratified, when there's more than one layer of cells, we always have to look at the shape of the top layer of cells. Or if we're using our fancy anatomy word for it, the word you'll see, it's called the apical layer, the apical layer of cells, the top layer of cells. So when I look at these two types of tissues, uh, the top layer is always going to be the layer that's by the open space. So my, my open space is up here. Here's my top layer of cells. My open space is up here. Here's that top layer of cells. These cells are really flat or they're really squashed. Can you help me out in the chat? 
what is the shape name for cells that are really flat, that are, are kind of squashed down? What are those ones called? Or they're kind of scaly. There's the other word that we used for it. Exactly. Uh, that, that shape name is called squamous or squamous. We have two types of stratified squamous epithelium. So two types of epithelial tissue that has these flat cells inside of it. The first kind that I see on the left, let me pick a different color to make sure it shows up. Uh, the first kind I see on the left is called non-keratinized. Non-keratinized. All this big fancy word means is that I don't have keratin. Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium means that I have cells that are flat. So let's add that squamous word over here. Remember, squamous means flat. I've got flat cells that are, um, there's many layers of them. They're stratified and they're non-keratinized. They don't have keratin. Keratin is something we're going to talk about a lot in lab next week. And when you start doing, I believe it's lesson number seven, lesson number seven is the skin in lecture. We're going to talk about how keratin makes things really strong or really resistant to damage. So when we talk about uh, what we see over here on, on the right, which is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, keratinized means I do have keratin. So my cells over here on, on the right do have keratin. The way I know that these cells on the right have keratin is see how this chunk of them is falling off? Or this part over here, even though it's not falling off, I don't see any nuclei or any little dots out here. See how on this one over here, when I look in the outermost layer, I can still see those dark circles, those dark dots that are out there. These cells on the outside of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, these cells are still alive. They're doing just fine. These cells that are out here that literally are falling off, these cells are dead. And they're dead because they're full of keratin. So when we look at keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, you will always see the cells falling off of that top layer. When I look at non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, all of those cells will still be attached and you'll still be able to see their nuclei out there because these cells are still alive. Um, Nicole asked if we would ever use these words with simple epithelium. We would not. Uh, these are not words that we use with simple uh, squamous epithelium. We only use them when we're taught stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, so the, we, we got the question in the chat again. Uh, so help me out in the chat. What does it mean when I say that the cells are keratinized? Did anyone catch that? What does it mean if the cells are keratinized? Keratinized. Yeah, um, that couple of things that it means. Uh, first thing that it means is that they're full of keratin, a keratin protein. And second thing that it means is that they're dead because keratin kills them. So this keratin protein is a really strong protein. It's a really tough protein. Um, here's another example of how anatomy and physiology relate to each other. When I talk about keratinized epithelium, you find this in a place called the epidermis, the epidermis which is the outermost layer of your skin. So uh, all these cells, by the way, that you see falling off out here, these keratinized uh, cells that are out here falling off, those are actually what makes up the dust that you see around you. Um, so you can thank your keratinized stratified squamous epithelium for the fact that you have to dust, or if we're being real here, for the fact that uh, dust accumulates when you don't have time to dust, or maybe that's just me. I don't know. Keratinized uh, cells are filled with keratin and they're dead. They're falling off. 
So I find those in, in places that are in contact with the environment uh, where I need really tough protection. We're going to find this non-keratinized stuff uh, in making up what we call mucous membranes. So for example, lining your mouth where I have saliva on the outside of the cells, I don't want those cells to be quite as tough or quite as rigid. Um, so I don't fill them with keratin so that they're not quite so tough and rigid. That's going to allow me to do more of the movements I do. That's going to just function better uh, in your mouth or in your esophagus, the first part of, of your throat. So non-keratinized epithelium is lacking keratin. I'm going to find that in places that this, the tissue isn't quite as tough. In the outermost layer of your skin, the epidermis, that's where I'm going to find the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Miriam has a question. Go for it. Um, doc, Dr. Aulis, um, on, the, on those slides, um, are those uh, horizontal view or a vertical view? Uh, because I always get confused thinking that the, the top layer, like on the left slide, um, mm -hmm. I always think this is like, a, a, because this, you said this is a stratified, means it's multiple layers. But Correct. I always see it as a flat surface that all these nu nuclei um, are uh, arranged uh, next to each other, like uh, a flat surface and they all at the same level. But, Got it. Um, okay. Uh, I understand your question. Um, yeah. So what we are looking at here is if you had a knife in your hand, this is going to sound really <laughs> terrible. If you had a knife in your hand, here's my knife up here. And I took that knife and I cut straight down. Uh, whenever we're looking at tissues, the open space, think of that as the top of your skin. I cut straight down through the skin. So this is my epithelial tissue that's found on the outside of the body. And then this is the tissues that are found deep to it. Uh, so when we're looking at, uh, especially when we're looking at this stratified squamous epithelium, this white part here, consider that as the outermost part, the top part. And then imagine that you cut straight down through it. So cutting straight down from the top of your hand down through. So this is superficial and this is deep down below it. So each of these are a layer that's stacked on top of each other. Does that help to answer your question, Miriam? Perfect, good, okay. Yeah, so especially when we look at, let me, so let me bounce back here. I'm gonna go back to these tissues. Same kind of idea uh, up here. This is the top. So this is the type of epithelium that we find in your throat. So where you're breathing in air, this is where the air would be. If I took a knife in, in your throat where the air is and cut straight down, here's the epithelial cells and here's the connective tissue underneath it. Or here's where your food is in your digestive tract. I take a knife where that food is and cut straight down. This is where I'd see the connective tissue underneath those epithelial cells. So here's kind of a, a general hint uh, about epithelial tissue. Um, epithelial tissue is known as covering and lining tissue. I mentioned that last week, covering and lining tissue. It's found covering the outside of the body or it's found lining the inside of the body. You're always gonna find epithelial tissue next to a space. So in this case, with my, my stratified squamous, it's next to the outside of the body. Uh, when we were talking about things like the air sacs of the lungs, the epithelial tissue is right next to the air. Or when we're talking about the kidney tubules, it's right next to the inside of the tubes, which leak to the outside of the body. So epithelial tissue is always on the slides, always going to be found next to, next to some empty space because it's either on the outside of the body or it's next to some kind of empty space in the body. All right, I believe this is my last, let me check, yep, this is my last epithelial tissue slide. For my friends who were here this morning, can you remind me what this type of tissue is called? Does anyone happen to remember what these 
these tissue types were? Yeah, so these are um, the, the saddest type of tissue. I'm, I'm going to call them the saddest type of tissue. These ones here are called transitional, transitional epithelium. Now, transitional epithelium, it, its name does tell me something about its shape. What does the name of transitional epithelium mean? What's going on with the shape of transitional epithelium? Yeah, so Monica used the word, it, it varies. Nicole Ariel is saying it changes. Yeah, when I talk about transitional epithelium, the shape of my cells changes, it transitions. The, the best way, here's what we said this morning, and I'm, I'm gonna stick to it. The best way to identify transitional epithelium is when you look at that apical surface, you look at that outside, see how this outer part of, of this type of epithelial tissue here, you see how it's kind of bumpy, or it kind of looks like a cloud going on on the outside here. Same thing over on this side, how it's kind of bumpy on the outer surface. The fact that these cells are kind of bumpy, um, that comes from the fact that they're gonna change their shape. So these are, are pictures of, of transitional epithelium um, so we find it just as a heads up in places like the bladder or the ureters, which are the tubes that connect to the bladder. Um, transitional epithelium, when your bladder is empty, looks really puffy like this. So the cells on the outside are really big and really puffy. They almost kind of look cuboidal. But as it's been longer since you've gone to the restroom, those cells will actually spread out. It'll help your, your bladder to expand so there's more space for urine. These cells will end up looking almost squamous shaped when your bladder is really extended. Um, so what we end up seeing is this puffy pattern that forms as, as the, the cells expand and contract based on the volume of urine that you're seeing. So my, my biggest hints for you in identifying transitional epithelium look for a puffy pattern on the top as compared to, let's go back one here, as compared to this flat line that I see right here where all the cells are attached. And even to some extent, this is a flat line too. Those cells are all, all connected to each other in a flat line. Same deal over here, one line of cells. There's none of this puffy business. So let me go back here. None of this puffing up all over the place. Also, transitional epithelium does have more than one layer in it. Um, so you would be looking for, for lots of cells that have a puffy appearance on the outside. And if you look on the inside, look at how messy all these different shapes of cells are. That's another way that we see that it's transitional epithelium. So again, transitional epithelium, best place to know where I find that is called the urinary bladder urinary bladder and its job there because it changes shape is to allow that organ to expand and contract so transitional epithelium helps your bladder to get bigger or to get smaller a note that i mentioned this morning and i'll reiterate it because it's really important this is one of uh, of the things that in our anatomy class the locations and functions of our types of tissue, epithelial and connective, this is an example of things that would be good to put on flashcards. If I were gonna make a flashcard, I would make a flashcard that on the front side says locations of transitional epithelium. And on the back side, I would put urinary bladder and ureters. Then I'd get a new flashcard and I would say function of transitional epithelium on the front. And on the back side, I would say allowing an organ to stretch. When you look at the tissue location and function guide, let me see if I have that. I do have that up on my computer. Let's see if it'll let me pull it over. Perfect, okay. This is, you can find this uh, either in the student Google Drive or in Visible Body. Notice how when I talk about simple squamous epithelium, for example, there are multiple locations in the body you can find it. it. We find it all over the place. But only the alveoli of the lungs is in bold. Since we are, are learning so much new information, I only want you to learn the information that's in bold because that's what's going to show up on the assignment and that's what's going to show up on the exam. So 
For your note card, that says the location of simple squamous epithelium. On the back side, we just write the alveoli or the air sacs of the lungs. For my note card that says the function of simple squamous epithelium, we just write gas exchange or diffusion. We don't have to put filtration of blood. We don't have to put secretion of fluid. I mean, if you want to, you can, but what you're required to know is the stuff that's in bold. So for each of these types of tissue that you're looking at, make sure for those bold locations or functions, make sure that's what you put on your note card. Anything that's not in bold, let's skip it for now to focus on, on what's actually most important for us this semester. Hannah has a question. So just making sure, um, are we supposed to know this right now for the exam this week or is this saved for the lab exam? This is for the lab exam. It's for the lab homework assignment and for the lab exam. So um, I, I would recommend, I, I mentioned it this morning, this kind of stuff is not the kind of stuff that you can learn the day before you take the exam. Um, this is one of those things, and I said it this morning, it's not sexy, but the only way you're going to be able to learn this stuff is repetition. We just got to see our flashcard that says that ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium is in the trachea and the upper respiratory tract. We got to see that flashcard like 20 times. Once we've seen it 20 times, we're going to remember that. But we have to see it those 20 times to remember it. So um, if you are a flashcard studier, we need to make our flashcards like today or tomorrow. We need to get those flashcards made now so that we have enough time to actually use them. Because if we wait until the night before the exam to make our flashcards, we're not going to have time to actually study with them. So try to get those flashcards made. You have that space in, in your lab packet for you to write the locations and the functions. If you want to put it in the lab packet as well, just make sure to only write the things that are in bold. And you'll see that too, uh, for example, as we get into the connective tissues, which is where we're going now. Notice that for many of the connective tissues, there are other uh, locations or other functions that are in bold for these types of tissues that you don't have to know. So anything that's not in bold, don't focus on that. Really focus on learning the stuff that's in bold. So put that on your worksheet, put that on your flashcards. All right, let's move to connective tissue. The first kind of connective tissue that I want to show you guys is a type of connective tissue called adipose connective tissue. Hey, adipose should ring a bell for us because we actually read about this in lecture. What's the easy person name for adipose tissue? What do normal people call adipose? What's the easy word for it? Yeah, so Nicole is correctly voting that adipose tissue, the easy person word for it is fat. So we learned about the type of cells or you read about brown fat and white fat cells those are adipocytes. So cells in adipose tissue are called adipocytes. Now, my image over here on the right, this is the primary way that, that we will see adipose tissue. Um, when we're looking at our adipose tissue in our image over here, notice that we see these big wide circles. These big wide circles are each one cell. So each of these represents one adipocyte, one fat cell. The other way that you'll see adipose tissue, though, is what we see over here on the left side. On the left side, instead of having big empty cells where my lipids, my fats, got washed away, I actually stained those lipids on this particular slide here. So these orange areas that you see inside that tissue, each of these are individual cells as well. And the lipids or the fats that are inside of them have just been stained orange. So imagine if instead of washing away all the fat that was inside these cells, instead I left it inside of there and I stained it orange. That's what's going on over here. So two appearances of adipose tissue, either these cells that are filled with orange fat that I can see or these big circular cells that look empty because I washed away the lipids that were inside of them. Now, 
I need you to write a note for yourself. And the guided lesson mentions this too. I need you to write a note for yourself though, that we can pair adipose shoe to simple squamous epithelium. Let me write our name in the chat here. Simple squamous epithelium. Left or right, which of these images shows simple squamous epithelium? Can we tell? Is it the left or the right with simple squamous epithelium? Some of us are afraid to vote. <laughs> um, several of our friends have, have voted for the left and that is correct. This image that I see over here, this is my simple squamous epithelium. Remember when we talked about simple squamous epithelium that there was white space on that slide because that's where the oxygen is inside these cells. So simple squamous epithelium on the, le or on the left, excuse me, on the right, we have adipose tissue. Now, uh, here's some of the notes I want you to make about how I tell the difference between these two things. First way that I'm gonna tell the difference between these two things is when I look at these circles in simple squamous epithelium, I'm gonna see nuclei. Remember, nuclei are the dark spots in epithelial tissue. So notice how there's dark spots everywhere on these circles. Those dark spots that I'm seeing are the nuclei, which helps me to know that this type of tissue is made out of a bunch of cells. All of those cells are, are together forming these big circles that we see. When I look over at adipose tissue, uh, a note to help us recognize adipose tissue is the, the dividing line between these cells or, or the boundary of each of these circles is gonna be really thin. That's because this pink line that I'm seeing right here is literally the plasma membrane of one cell. When we were looking at these circles over here, it was entire cells that were making up this boundary. Over here, this is all one cell right here. This is an open space in the middle where I would have lipids. So I have a really thin dividing line around these open spaces. And maybe one place on that, that thin line, you'll see how there's some darkness here. Or look over here, there's a little bit of darkness right here, a little bit of darkness right here. When we talk about an adipocyte, a fat cell, this entire cell is filled with lipids. So the nucleus of this cell actually gets pushed all the way up against the plasma membrane on the outside. When you're reviewing for exam number one, go back and look at that brown fat versus white fat activity that you did because I asked you to identify a cartoon that showed white fat. And in that cartoon, let me draw for us here. In that cartoon, there was a big lipid droplet inside my white fat cell and its nucleus was squeezed over to the side. So each of these are gonna have a little dark spot where that nucleus is. And then they would have had a big area filled with lipids. So big area filled with lipids and a dark spot. So biggest things to compare when we're, we're looking at simple squamous epithelium and adipose, look at how thick the dividing line is between the, the open spaces. If it's really thin, it's adipose tissue. When looking at that line, if I see black spots, if I see multiple, uh, that's going to represent simple squamous epithelium. So make sure we're comp comparing simple squamous epithelial tissue to adipose connective tissue, an important comparison for us. Here's another comparison image to show you guys. So another way that I can see simple squamous epithelium, see my cells that are all kind of wavy or, or I used the word weepy earlier. They kind of look like they're, they're weeping. Um, they're, they're squishing all over the place. And I'm looking here at some adipose tissue in the middle of, of this picture here. So all of these are big adipocytes, big fat cells inside here. Um, the open space is where the lipids would be. Whereas in my picture over here, this open space is where there would be oxygen. So make sure we're comparing simple squamous epithelium to adipose
connective tissue. Next type of tissue that we're looking at, two different versions of here, this is called areolar loose connective tissue, areolar loose connective tissue. The way that you recognize this type of tissue uh, is we're going to see these dark spots that represent cells. And then you're gonna see lots of little lines that are proteins that kind of crisscross all over the place. So we're looking at this tissue too. I've got these dark spots that are those cells and then those crisscross lines that go all over the place. Areolar connective tissue is the type of connective tissue that has all of the types of, of fibers, proteins inside of it that that connective tissue has. So they have some big, thick, and you can see them pink in the left image, collagen proteins. So these big proteins that are kind of in the background of my picture, those big ones are collagen proteins. Then we also have proteins that are called elastin proteins or elastic proteins. See these little squiggly ones right here that are kind of folded, funky? Elastic proteins are just like a rubber band. They expand and contract, so we've got some elastic proteins. And then finally, we're gonna see proteins that are called reticular proteins. Reticular proteins are proteins that are, are branching, or they kind of look like a net. So I drew this morning, reticular proteins kind of branch all over the place. These are really good at, at filtering. So we're going to see, uh, let's see, uh, in this mess inside here, where all my, my protein fibers are kind of intersecting with each other, those are some of my reticular proteins that are branching places. Or you can see when I zoom in really close up here how we're branching to kind of go in different directions down here. So areolar loose connective tissue. The big thing you're looking for are dark spot cells that are known as fibroblasts. And then you're looking for those proteins that are in there. The collagen proteins in the background, and then we have those elastic proteins that are all funky and the reticular proteins. Um, yeah, so the, the collagen proteins are some of the, the fuzzy pink stuff that I see toward the back of this type of tissue. So we can't really see them distinctly. I've got some tissue coming that you can see the, the collagen proteins better on, um, but it's kind of this pink stuff that's there in the background, the collagen proteins back there. You can't really see them as well on this one. We're really more on this one seeing those reticular proteins that are branching all over the place, making that net for us. Let me see if my, uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, let, me, let me go to the type of tissues that show collagen better. Um, so the, the types of tissue that I'm looking at here, what I'm seeing, pretty much everything I'm seeing on these pictures are collagen proteins. So uh, over here on the left, we have a dense irregular, irregular connective tissue. And over here on the right, we have dense regular connective tissue. The names of these two types of tissue comes down to the way that their collagen proteins are arranged. It's all about the collagen. So let's start with our dense regular connective tissue over here on the right. Dense regular connective tissue has collagen proteins that are arranged regularly, as in they're kind of in straight lines. So see all of my straight, well, they're not straight, right? They're wavy, but they're packed together really nicely. These wavy lines, all of this stuff, all of this yellow stuff that I'm seeing is collagen proteins. These little black spots that I see inside of here, these are those cells that we talked about before, those cells that we call the fibroblasts. I'll give you the name again. These little dark spots that I see inside here are fibroblasts. A uh, fun fact about that word fibroblast, fibro means fiber, blast means builder. So these dark spots that you see here are collagen fiber builders. They're, they're building collagen proteins. And they're when they build them, they're putting them in a regular arrangement or they're squeezing them all into lines so they look pretty and they're really nice next to each other. Compare that to the mess that I see over here on the left side. 
This is dense irregular connective tissue. The reason that dense irregular connective tissue looks so funky is because these collagen proteins that I see in this type of tissue are all going different directions. So some of these proteins that we're looking at, so see right here, I can kind of see a line. These proteins are arranged up and down when we're, we're made this cut on the tissue. Some of these proteins, like I see right here, were probably sticking out straight at, at your face. So imagine them coming out of the board towards you. Some of them are, are kind of at an angle, so we see them traveling differently. The big idea with dense irregular connective tissue is I've got a ton of these pink collagen proteins, but they're really not arranged in any particular way. And that's a good thing for making these types of tissue able to stretch and be strong in a lot of different directions. Um, but it just looks really ugly. I, I like I have, I have a colleague who says that this kind of looks like a Picasso painting um, where it's just kind of swirly and all over the place. I like to say that dense irregular connective tissue makes my OCD sad. Like I look at this, it's like, what kind of mess do we have going on over here? This is just just insane. Over here, this dense regular stuff, that's nice and calming. All of my proteins arranged regularly. They're all going the same direction. But again, both of these, we are looking at the arrangement of collagen, the, that thick protein. Lots of proteins, because they're dense tissues. So the difference comes down to the way that I put those collagen proteins together. That other protein we talked about, one of the other proteins we talked about, was the elastin protein. Elastin protein. Hey, here's a note that I want you to write down. I want you to underline, highlight, star. Whenever I have this elastin protein, whenever I have any kind of elastic uh, tissue, you will always see the color purple. Again, anything with elastic in its name, you're always going to see purple because elastic proteins, when I put them on a slide, I stain them purple. So here on the right side, the picture I'm looking at right here, notice the, all these little purple stringies that I see here. Those are my elastic proteins. And then this pink that I see mixed in with it, those are actually my collagen proteins. I am looking at the type of tissue called dense elastic connective tissue. Dense elastic connective tissue. Dense means it's full of proteins. Elastic means those proteins are collagen, but also these elastin proteins that I see inside here. And remember, the elastin proteins are always purple. We're looking for purple. So if I've got purple and pink that are a mess together, dense elastic connective tissue. Over here on the left, I am looking at my first type of cartilage tissue. This is called elastic cartilage. I know it's elastic cartilage because I've got this purple lines that are inside of it. So those purple lines are elastic proteins that I'm seeing inside this tissue. And then notice that I have these really big groups of cells. These really big groups of cells that I see inside here. Those cells are a type of cell called chondrocytes. Chondrocytes. Chondro means cartilage. So these cells that I'm looking at here, these big large cells are the cartilage cells, chondrocytes. And because they have these purple lines around them, I call this elastic cartilage. So again, big idea. Anytime we've got elastic in the name, make sure you see or you can find those purple fibers. That's my tip off, purple fibers for elastic. So notice I'm looking at more purple fibers mixed in with my big chondrocytes here. So this is another example of what elastic cartilage looks like. Those big chondrocytes surrounded by purple elastic fibers. Over here on the left, I'm looking at something called hyalin cartilage. Hyalin cartilage, by the way, 
uh, the one of the best places to learn it is it's found in the fetal skeleton. This is what all the bone, most of the bones in your in your body start out as as hyaline cartilage. Great way to recognize it. It kind of looks like deer tracks in the snow. So imagine that a deer was walking around through the snow. So these sets of chondrocytes in their groups of two, those are kind of like, like the hoof print that a deer would leave behind when it's walking through the snow. So hyaline cartilage, uh, it's hard to see in this picture. Usually this background is gonna be a little bit more pink than we see on this particular image, but you're always gonna see that, that deer track pattern where it's groups of chondrocytes that are together as twos, hyaline cartilage that I see in here. One other type of cartilage tissue that you're also going to recognize based on its color is fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage gets its name because it has a lot of fibers, a lot of, in this case, collagen fibers. So 100%, the way you're going to recognize uh, fibrocartilage tissue is the fact that I have these blue streaky collagen proteins. So when I make a fibrocartilage slide, the way that I prepare it and uh, the way that I, I make it stay together and, and not fall apart is I use a stain that makes collagen blue. So when you see these blue wavy patterns, I see the blue wavy patterns over here too, that's my collagen proteins. And then you'll see these dark purple or the pink spots that I see over here, the bright pink spots, those are my chondrocytes, my cartilage cells, mixed in with these collagen proteins. So dark blue collagen proteins, bright pink chondrocytes, or these dark blue collagen proteins, purple pink chondrocytes that I see inside here. Both of these are my appearance of fibrocartilage, fibrocartilage. And because this cartilage has so many protein fibers in it, it's really strong. This is gonna be the type of, of cartilage that's really good at holding things together or absorbing shock. Both of those are the functions of this type of tissue because it has all of these strong uh, uh, collagen fibers inside of it. All right, I was informed that your guided lesson did not include pictures of the bone tissues. So let me show you what those bone tissues look like so you are able to see them and maybe make yourself a quick sketch here. Uh, we have two types of bone in the body. We have what's called compact bone and what's called spongy bone. Let's take a guess in the chat do we think that the left image or the right image is what we would call compact bone? Left or right, compact bone. Yeah, so uh, we, we split our votes a little bit. A lot of us voted for the right. And what I see on the right here is actually compact bone. When you look at compact bone, I'll write that underneath it here, compact bone. When I look at compact bone, the entire field of view, everything I'm looking at is, is filled. So you're gonna have these areas that have really dark spots in them. And then you're also gonna have areas that have smaller spots inside of them. But if you were to hold up this slide to the light, if you're gonna look at this tissue just with your eyes, not with a microscope, this entire area would kind of look a beige color because compact bone is completely squeezed full. Um, in particular, it's squeezed full with what we call calcium phosphate, calcium phosphate. So this beige stuff that's really light out here and a little bit darker in here, that's calcium phosphate. We also have some collagen mixed in there. And we'll talk a whole lot more about that, that collagen and that calcium when we talk about bone tissue in lecture. So coming up in unit two. Big idea though with identifying compact bone tissue, look for this tree ring pattern. So we have this dark spot and then we see rings that are formed around it. Each of those rings are individual cells. 
the cells of bone tissue are called osteocytes, bone cells. So the bone cells arrange themselves in circles around these dark spots. These dark spots are where we would find blood vessels if this tissue was alive. So compact bone tissue, we've got a dark area here called a central canal, and then the tree rings of those cells that we find around it. That's, that's how you recognize compact bone tissue. When we look at spongy bone tissue, the way you're gonna recognize that is you'll see pink bone tissue that's kind of arranged in these fingers. In between this pink bone tissue, you're gonna see some spaces that are either open or they look like they have little spots inside of them. So the name of those pink fingers of bones, they're called trabeculae, which literally means little beams. In between those trabeculae, in between those fingers, we find a space for bone marrow, bone marrow. So spongy bone has open spaces inside of it. It's like a sponge. That's how it's got its name. So you might see some white spaces on the slide in between these pink fingers. Or the other version of spongy bone that I have looks like this. You can see it over here on the left. Notice how there's this dark purple and blue little spots inside here. And next to those little spots, we also see the trabeculae. We see the bony fingers that are inside of here. So here's an image of spongy bone that's a lot like what we saw on the previous slide where there was open space in between those trabeculae. I included this picture over here to show you that sometimes that bone marrow completely fills up the open space in, inside our field of view. So both of these show me spongy bone tissue where I've got some space in between the bone tissue. Again, with compact bone tissue, everything in this field of view here, all of this is completely filled in. There's no space for, for that bone marrow. I actually wanna bounce back to a type of tissue that I'm pretty sure I don't need to take class time for, but I'll, I'll mention it anyway. Um, can anyone tell me in the chat, what are these two pictures? What kind of tissue do I see in these pictures here? I bet we can all guess these. I guess if some of us are afraid to guess, right? We are looking at blood. This is a blood smear. When we look at, at blood, uh, most of the cells that we see are these little red ones that, that look like they have a hole in the middle. These are those red blood cells that in lecture number two, we were talking about water going into or coming out of, right? Those red blood cells. Uh, I'll mention, let me, oh, it's not gonna let me, is it gonna let me zoom in? Here we go, let me try something. Do you see this funky looking cell right here? So this little guy right here and maybe his neighbors looking a little funky up here and this one over here, how the plasma membrane is kind of weird shapes. That's what happens to a cell when it loses water to the environment. Its shape gets a little bit funky. So especially this one right here, you can see that this one right here is, is starting to lose some of its water to the environment. So it looks funky. Usually though, they're gonna look pretty circular they look like they have an open space in the middle because they're really flat in the middle. Um, oops, can I zoom back out? Okay, uh, so when you're looking at blood connective tissue, most of what you're gonna see are these donut looking cells. They're called erythrocytes, red blood cells. But then we're also gonna see uh, what are called uh, leukocytes, which are white blood cells. The name is a little bit of a misnomer when you're looking at it on a slide because my leukocytes are these ones that I see here that are kind of really dark colored. This one's a little bit red. These ones over here are kind of like, uh, have, have purple nuclei and then light pink. All of these things basically that are not red blood cells are, are white blood cells, are leukocytes. But then these little tiny dark spots that you see here, those are platelets. Can anyone tell me What's the job of platelets in your bloodstream? All these little tiny guys here. What do these little platelets help your blood to do? Anybody know? Yeah, so, so platelets help with blood clotting. So these little dark spots that you see here, those are the things that when you get a cut, they actually literally will explode. 
um, and that will help to make proteins that, that help your blood to, to clot so we don't lose too much blood. So platelets help with blood clotting. Erythrocytes, all these red guys here, uh, they help you with oxygen transport. That's the job of red blood cells. And then all of these different leukocytes, all of these white blood cells, these leukocytes help with immune reactions. So different functions of, of each of my types of cells. I want to confirm. Okay, one last type of tissue to show you guys. This last type of tissue to show you guys is called reticular connective tissue reticular connective tissue. And when I look at this type of tissue, we're really looking for those reticular fibers, those branching proteins. See all these little tiny lines, uh, almost like chicken wire that's that you'd use to build a fence. Um, and then I see these dark spots that are cells that are kind of sitting on top of it. So all of these little branching proteins that I'm seeing inside of here are my reticular proteins. Remember that I said reticular proteins are kind of like a net. So the job of, of this, this type of tissue that I find in places like your lymph nodes is to filter stuff out. So by having all of these branching proteins that I see inside of here, I'm doing a really good job of, of filtering. I push fluid through it and catch bacteria or I catch worn out red blood cells to prevent them from keeping traveling around in my blood. So the last kind of tissue for me to mention to you guys is this reticular connective tissue. Uh, and the way you'll recognize it is all of these little proteins that are mixed in uh, that, that form that little fine mesh in, in the background. And then you'll see these dark cells on top of it. These dark cells are, are actually white blood cells. So we have a lot of immune cells that are here when I'm doing filtering. So reticular connective tissue, that's that last type of tissue. Uh, Nicole asked in the chat, will proteins always be pink? Uh, in reticular connective tissue, yes, they'll always be pink. In uh, dense irregular connective tissue, they will pretty much always be pink, maybe be brown. Um, but remember things like fibrocartilage, they were bright blue. Or things like those elastic proteins, those were purple. So they're not always pink. Different types of proteins can be different colors. Uh, but reticular proteins are always pink. Collagen proteins generally um, always going to be pink as well. Yeah. We have hit 6.30, which means that our, our time is technically done. Um, here's what I'll mention. Tomorrow at 9.30, we are mostly going to focus on lecture stuff. But what I want to do with you guys, first thing we'll do is I'm going to split us up into groups and I'm going to have us try to start identifying uh, a few types of tissues in pictures. So if you can happen to make it tomorrow morning at 930, we're going to start with doing a little bit of practice together at identifying some tissues. Um, and you have a couple of documents in the student Google Drive, it, it's called tissue images from our slides, where it goes through and it's a bunch of pictures, they're not labeled. So you're going to have to do a little bit of detective work to try to figure out what is, is shown in each kind of, of tissue. But these pictures that I used during our class today, these are some of the pictures that you'll find in those tissue images from our slides folder. So check that out um, to, to help you start practicing as well. Um, one final plug I want to make for you guys, let me exit out of my PowerPoint here, to remind you, and I'll post a link, that we have, oops, we're going to go down the buttonhole here, uh, we have that website we looked at with, um, when we were, were doing the microscopy stuff, remember that we have that virtual microscope. I should have reloaded it. Sorry, it's taken its sweet time here. Um, in the virtual microscope, if you click on explore at the bottom, it's running real slow on me here. Uh, in the slide box, you can do uh, human slides right here. And you can look at each of the types of tissue that we talked about today, or almost all of them. 
So if you're having a really hard time identifying pseudostratified columnar epithelium, I click on here. Now I've got to go through and practice just like I would in the lab. So remember, we always start by moving our course focus, course adjustment knob, get it mostly in focus, and then I use that fine adjustment knob to get it really clear. Gonna add some extra light maybe. Now I'm gonna bump up, make it a little bit clearer. Make sure that it's clear. I'm gonna add a little more light. Gonna go all the way up to 40 times. Now I can see that tissue pretty clearly. Again, I'm gonna put some more light on there. So pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Hey, check it out. On this image, I know it's kind of small on your screen here, but on this image right here, I think I'm seeing some eyelashes. If I'm seeing eyelashes, what's the word that I put at the beginning of, of my, my tissue? If I've got these eyelashes down here, yeah, I would add that ciliated word. So this particular thing that I'm looking at in my picture here, this would be ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. So really great tool to go through and look at your types of tissues. So again, I got there by looking at the human slides. Please take some time to go through and play with each of these different slides because it's gonna help you start to see them. So I'll make sure when I post the, the link for, for the recording from this session, I'll make sure that there's also a place for you to click to get back to this microscope. So a great way for you to, to do some guided practice would be to use these slides in here. Before I shut off the recording, are there any uh, last minute questions that we wanted to, to put out there? How are we feeling now? Are we feeling any better about our tissues? A little bit better? Nicole says she feels a little bit better. That's good. Hannah says she's okay. Hey, that's a start. This, to, to be perfectly honest with you guys, th this is a big week in lab. And I said it this morning, even if we were in person, this would be, would be a big, tough week for us. So um, props to you guys for, for sticking with me here. And we talked about epithelial and connective tissues. Uh, but definitely... Um, try this this microscope here to try to help you out. Definitely look at the pictures in the guided lesson. Try to go through some of those um, unlabeled images that are in the Google Drive for you to start working on, on practicing identifying things. Um, Ariel asks, besides flashcards, how else do we study the locations and functions? Um, that, honestly, flashcards, I think, is one of the best ways to do it. Um, you can make virtual flashcards using Quizlet. Hopefully we've heard of Quizlet before. I'll type it in just to make sure. Quizlet, uh, it's free online flashcards. If you're faster at typing than handwriting, you can do Quizlet for flashcards. Um, I don't know if there is, let me, let me do something really fast. I'm going to check. There's a website that I like um, called Free Anatomy Quizzes, but I don't I don't know that they do tissue stuff. Um, so yeah, my I, I think your best bet is probably um, probably flashcards. Hannah is is rooting for Quizlet. Um, the, the the nice thing about doing flashcards for this is it chunks it up into really small pieces of information for you. Um, the other way, I guess, if, if you learn by writing stuff, you could make yourself a piece of paper where you just kind of write it over and over and over again. So uh, that would be the other option. Get yourself a piece of paper, write three columns, one for the name of the type of tissue, one for its location, one for its function, and just kind of write it over and over again. So if you're, uh, we call it a read-write learner, if that's the way you want to study it, that, that would work too. So you give that a try. Flashcards, Quizlet, columns of paper where we rewrite it but the there there is no students always ask me what's the fastest way to learn this <laughs> unfortunately there's not like a, a super fast oh i'll just learn it overnight uh, i i don't have an answer for that one so um gonna take some time whatever way you want to make that time as as least painful as possible go for it 
Um, I highly recommend, in case you uh, want to splurge to make your studying a little more fun, there's a type of, of pens called, they're, they're called flare pens. That's uh, their, their title. Let me see, I've got one in front of me here. I'm pretty sure, yeah, they're made by Papermate. Um, this is totally random, but these are my absolute favorite pens to grade with, and they're really nice to write with. So if you want to make your flashcard writing um, more fun, check out those pens. They're, they're pretty awesome. I know they sell, sold in stores everywhere. I just didn't add for, for Papermate pens there, <laughs> but uh, they're my favorite. So you could look into that. All right. I am done with everything that I want to share. So I'm going to shut off the recording and stick around for a couple more minutes. But if you can try to uh, pop in tomorrow, 930, uh, same place. We will start covering lecture number four, but we're going to start with a little bit of, of tissue stuff too. So uh, goodbye to my friends on the recording. Hope to see you guys in a session soon.